We're going to make today fun, okay? So let's, let's start by reviewing why we're all here. Really, what's the issue? Why are we here? Well, diabetes is really common. It's common in our hospitals. About one in five patients in hospital has diabetes. And that when we look at overall in Canada, it's about the fourth most common comorbid condition listed on all hospital discharges. When we look at data from Alberta, over the 2014-2015 fiscal year, and this accounts for approximately 235,000 admissions, we see that the median length of stay for patients with diabetes is two days longer than those without diabetes. I'm sure many of you, if not most of you, are familiar with the Canadian Diabetes Association guidelines, the clinical practice guidelines that have now, the CDA has been renamed to Diabetes Canada. Um, but the guidelines, as far back as at least 2003, and then the most recent published ones, 2013, have provided clinical practice guidelines for the topic of in-hospital management of diabetes. And these guidelines have stated that glycemic target should be between 5 and 10 millimoles per liter. They also have advocated, since we've been able to find and read about these guidelines pertaining to in hospital, is that the best way to give insulin, if you need to give insulin in hospital, is through basal bolus insulin regimes. And they discourage the use of sliding scale insulin. We know that hyperglycemia in hospital is common, and this is clearly seen both in the literature and also provincially through all of the data collection that we've had. And I'll just give you an example of that. So in four acute care sites in Alberta, this is looking at data from the 2014 calendar year, and it accounts for about 7,500 patients. And in that population, there were about 371,000 point of care tests done. And what you see is that the prevalence of blood sugars over a recommended target is about 36%. And what we find is that's pretty much in keeping with the literature. And it's also in keeping with other sites provincially that we've looked at. So when we look in the literature, hyperglycemia, looking at the critically ill population, non-critically ill, the surgical and the medical population, hyperglycemia is consistently associated with poor outcome. It's associated with delayed wound healing, surgical site infections, hospital acquired infections such as pneumonia, an increased length of stay, not surprising from the associated complications, and also mortality. You're going to hear a lot more about this and the data around improving glycemic control and improving outcomes in Dr. Helmley, Helmley's portion of the talk. Part of the foundational work for this project that the DONSCN undertook was actually taking the time to ask patients what they thought of their hospital experience. And so in the fall of 2014, a survey was sent out to all of the patients in Alberta that were hospitalized during the month of June 2014. So the survey was sent out to 2,800 patients and there was about a 26% response rate, which is fairly typical for survey responses. And what the consistent message was that patients with diabetes were less satisfied than, their, uh, than the general inpatient population in terms of their satisfaction score. Three main themes came out of this survey, and this is what patients asked for. One, they wanted improvement in blood sugars. They recognized that their sugars were not well managed during their hospital stay. They also commented that they weren't on the same regimes that they were on and familiar with at home. And they recognized that the timing of our insulin in our, and or medications was not appropriate in relation to their meals. 
The other theme was food. So they wanted better options, different options for the diabetic menu. And those that were able to or practice carbohydrate counting and insulin adjustment for carbohydrate requested that they have that information available, the content, carbohydrate content of their food so that they could self-manage. And then finally, they wanted the care team members those people taking care of them, doctors, nurses, etc., to all be on the same page when it came to their diabetes management. As well, they wanted to be part of that care team since they felt, and appropriately so feel, that they have great knowledge of their own personal diabetes. So what can be done? This is why we're all here today. So we recognize that caring for patients with diabetes in the acute care center is extremely complex. There are lots of factors to be considered and there's lots of, lots of different stakeholders involved. So this is a very busy slide and it's probably become busier since we've created this in 2015. Um, we realize that this improvement in glycemic management in hospital needed to have a multifaceted approach. And it wasn't just about, let's put an order set out there and everything will get fixed. So we've been in collaboration with many groups in the province, as Glenda alluded to, um, including nutrition and food services, pharmacies, the zones, other SCNs. And then a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting down and just trying to put together other groups, a list of other groups that we have participated with in this project and, and have had great support with and really been collaborative with. And so I'm just going to list a few. So lab point of care testing, um, COACT, uh, our data analyst group, Dimer, policy, forms, human factors, and uh, many others. So why we're here today, and the, the major initiative is basal bolus insulin therapy, and really it's implementation of basal bolus insulin therapy for those patients who have hyperglycemia in hospital and need to be on insulin, and in favor of and trying to eliminate the use of sliding scale insulin alone. You're gonna hear a lot more of that through Dr. Helmley's talk. Many of you have heard about the guidelines that have been created provincially uh, for the safe management of insulin pump. This is there to support patients that are able and meet criteria for safe self-management of the insulin pump during their hospital stay or for various procedures that are undertaken. Um, these, these guidelines are available, they're housed in policy, but you can access them through Insight, um, through the pharmacy websites, and now um, we're happy to say that we have finally got our iPumpit website up, accessible to anyone, both within and outside of AHS, and in particular for patients, so that they can prepare for their hospital stay. Um, We have supported the emergency SCN in their development of the DK emergency guidelines. And I'm sure all of you are aware of the provincial uh, pharmacy initiative, which first started with the introduction of a simplified formulary in 2015. And I think almost all sites in Alberta now have moved to patient-specific dispensing with primarily the use of disposable insulin pens. Um, these can be found, all, all these initiatives can be found on the AHS Provincial Pharmacy website. Nutrition and food services certainly listened to what patients were asking for and on the AHS Nutrition and Food Services website is a document that contains carbohydrate content of foods. They've also gone into various hospitals and have in begun to include carbohydrate content on the menus. I want to be clear that this is for patients. This is a patient tool for individuals that self-manage and they carbohydrate count 
and use that information to dose, what, dose their insulin for that particular meal. It is not an expectation of frontline nurses to be able to carbohydrate count, nor to adjust insulin. That is an advanced skill. Supporting the whole project and recognizing that hyperglycemia is not what we want to see in our patients. This is a real change in philosophy because a lot of people in the past have sort of ignored the high blood sugars. So to support this major change in philosophy, which is not only recognizing that hypoglycemia is worrisome, but hyperglycemia is not great, we've created a glycemic management policy that aims to, to help the front end staff recognize and treat hyper and hypoglycemia early on. This, has got, this is, was in its draft and still is in its draft until uh, it's finalized by legal and COACT. But in November, it went out for stakeholder feedback. We got all of the feedback and incorporated um, the, the recommendations into the document. As part of this policy, we have been collaborating with lab point of care testing. So not only the critical values on the glucometers, which re or alert at 2.5 and 2.6 and 25. Now we are adding or have the opportunity and your sites will have the opportunity to add new alerts at 3.9 and 18.1, which match up with interventions required uh, based on the order set. So alerting, alerting the staff when blood sugars are low early on, but also when they're high so that we can intervene and avoid that severe hyperglycemia. Recognizing that it's not as simple as just creating an order set, which in and of itself was not simple, um, but creating an order set and just putting it out there and saying, here doctors prescribe this and here nurses follow the orders, um, it's far more complex than that. And Dr. Helmley is going to speak to this in great detail, the process um, that is imperative, which is the science, using the science of knowledge translation, which is how do you take what's known in research and what's found to be the most effective and best practice and actually put that into action at the bedside. And so there's multiple steps and that's why we're here today. Um, that's the most important part of today, which is the afternoon. Uh, so t this morning is all about giving you information of why this is important, why we're doing this, and then the afternoon it's going to be working through your own unique site um, barriers and facilitators to see ahead of time where, where might there be glitches and how do we overcome those for implementation. So. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to Trevor Small, um, your leader, uh, who's going to talk about your unique Grey Nuns optimization project. Uh, all right, so I am Trevor Small. I am the Senior Director of Operations for this site. Um, what that translates to is about a third of the hospital. Uh, I'm also the corporate lead for medical device for processing for Covenant Health, as well as the lead for the Northern Alberta Vascular Center. Word of advice, if people offer you a position and you have to write it down to remember the title, you might want to think twice. It's, it's, it's pretty bad some days. Um, anyway, I'm really honored and happy to be part of this educational day. Uh, and as much as I'm going to give comments, a lot of it's thank yous. Um, first off, thank you uh, for attending and welcome to our and welcome to our educational partners from the various faculties, uh, the Edmonton Quality Council, as well as staff from other sites in the Edmonton zone. We're honored to have you here at our event at uh, Grey Nuns. I need to give special thanks to Glenda Moore and the team uh, from the Diabetes, Obesity and Nutrition Strategic Clinical Network. Uh, Glenda made some mention of the SCNs and I, I feel it's um, important to echo the good work the SCNs uh, perform. Um, essentially these are made up of experts in their fields who come together uh, to help provide vision and direction in their respective topic areas. Um, we're truly thankful for their support and ongoing quality improvement recommendations. Uh, I want to give thanks to the Calgary Hospitalist Innovation Committee, also known as, as a CHIC, who graciously shared their project name with us. So today you're learning about basal bolus insulin therapy, but uh, on the screen a few moments ago you saw all the other quality initiatives that the SCN um, is working on. 
Uh, this is the first of several opportunities for us in the for our glucose optimization project and on behalf of the GO steering committee we're very excited to undertake this important work um, in partnership with Alberta Health Services and the SCN. Uh, this project has several site champions to help provide support and I feel it important to recognize those individuals and I would ask they either stand or wave just uh, if they are in the room uh, for a moment so everybody can put a, a, a name to a face. So from medicine, Dr. Colin, Colin McDonald. I see Colin there. Morning. Uh, from pharm pharmacy is uh, Carly and Timichek. Uh, our quality and safety practitioners here on the site, Joy Hatton and Carrie Waggett. Good morning. Uh, our corporate lead, uh, Heather Hackett, uh, is ill today, so I won't introduce her. And obviously, from an administrative point of view, it's myself. Um, just to, for those internally, just to understand uh, our approach. So the training approach we're taking on this project is one of peer-to-peer. -peer. So by virtue of you being in the room today, um, there is some accountability on you. Uh, we're asking that program champions that you support us during the implementation to help assist others and make the change to the new forms, the new process, and to essentially create a new culture uh, around gly glycemic management uh, of patients. Um, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, the removal of the sliding scale and I'd love to, you know, be able to know six months or a year from now that, um, you know, that's a thing of the past. People don't even know what that is. Um, and again, I think that's also important why we have faculties here, um, others from the zone, uh, people from the Quality Council. Um, this is going to take a movement uh, from a number of different people to help us in this endeavor so that that becomes a thing of the past and that this is the new world. Uh, the evidence you're shown here today, I strongly believe, will demonstrate the significant benefits of basal bolus insulin therapy. Um, and our challenge is going forward to move the culture of gray nuns away from the sliding scale to an improved state. And for this, we, we really do need your help. So post today, we'll be using the information that we've gleaned to build a site-wide implementation and communication plan. Uh, and it's important that um, you bring feedback from your respective areas on how best we can support you through this change. Uh, so without further delay, again, I want to thank you for donating your precious time to join us and for your support. Uh, enjoy this educational opportunity, and thanks for help changing the lives for the patients we serve every day. Mm -hmm.